Well, here to discuss these developments and more is Kevin Sorelli, chief Washington correspondent for Bloomberg Television and anchor of the program Sound on Bloomberg Radio. Kevin, welcome. Thank you for having me. For the first time in more than a decade, Democrats control the House and the Senate, as well as the White House. And even so, President Biden is reaching across that aisle to pass his $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. Will there be any Republican support for a bill with that many zeros? incredibly unlikely. Yesterday I spoke with a senior source uh, to a Republican senator who essentially said if Democrats go the route of a process that they've set up for next week known as budget reconciliation, then ultimately uh, virtually no Republicans will get on board with $1.9 trillion worth of economic stimulus. Now, when I talk to Democrats and when I talk to sources connected to the White House, they say that this is still going to likely be on path for passage sometime between now and March. But what essentially has become a political poison pill for Republicans are increasing the amount of uh, checks to $1,400 checks that could go out. Uh, progressives in the House and the Senate say that's not enough money. They want to see it uh, upwards of $2,000. People like Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, but also raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Republicans say right now small businesses, small restaurants wouldn't be able to afford that. They simply say this is too much money uh, that, the, that, quite frankly, America just cannot afford at this current time. If Republicans are in agreement over this right now, there still seems to be divide in the party. We talk about it being the yeah. party of Trump, whether it still is. Where do the Republicans stand right now? Well, we have seen the, in the past week uh, all of this political tension amongst Republicans really bubble over, especially as it relates to the third highest ranking House member, Liz Cheney, uh, in which she had voted for impeachment uh, against now former President Donald Trump. We've seen Republicans still aligned with President Trump uh, come out forcefully and criticize her for that vote. But again, when I talked to Republicans this week, what they essentially said to me was, look, 75 million Americans voted for President Trump for re-election, but they didn't necessarily vote uh, for the insurrection that occurred at the Capitol. And as a result of that, there is this open discussion that is happening about the best path forward for the Republican Party, for leadership, for a new generation of Republicans in terms of the direction that the party should take at the start of the 2022 uh, election cycle. And you saw uh, uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy meeting with President Trump uh, just within the last couple of days and trying to figure out, again, that direction for the party. That's the long-term future, Kevin, but, but, but very quickly, what's, what's the short-term strategy, the Republican leadership strategy for that impeachment trial? What are you hearing from um, Mitch McConnell's folks? <laughs> Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Jeff, is, is trying to figure out uh, the timetable. There's some politics behind the scene that suggests that he might feel that a longer-term trial would be uh, in the benefit uh, for Republicans. But likely, what I heard from the source yesterday was a March timetable for that trial. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you.